have been one of your toughest losses of the year, given the injuries and everything else, yeah. and the opponents. Yeah, you're not wrong there, David. Um, Oh, look, it was always going to be a tough game. Um, I knew that. I mean, Sheffield are a good team, and they're coming good at the right end of the season, as they always do. And, um, you know, uh, the thing for me today was, the one thing I asked about the players through the week um, was, we need, to, we need to build some foundations coming into the Super 8s. And what the first thing we need to get right is getting our attitude right um, and, and make sure we're playing with some intent and some purpose because in recent weeks, you know, we just haven't been at the races, you know, mentally. Um, we've been going through the motions and we've been disjointed and, and, and that's probably translated in terms of, like you said, what we've seen on the field. Hence, coming off the back of a couple, of, a couple of poor losses and poor results, you know, because we just haven't been nowhere near good enough. So I challenged the players today. I questioned them in terms of, you know, what can we do in the here and now to be better? Um, you know, I mean, to, to, to improve things. And, you know, I questioned individually, you know, your commitment to yourself and to the team. And um, we spoke about that through the week. We had some honesty and, and we had a really, really good week's uh, preparation in terms of our intensity at training. And, and I think it showed out there, you know, we, we were a different team today in terms of where we've been in recent weeks. And I, again, I, I understand why we've lost our way a little bit. You know, four or five weeks ago, myself came out of the team. Uh, Tom Gilmore returned to witness and we are building up a pretty good partnership there. Uh, Reese Lovegrave was out there for a few weeks and Daniel Harrison we've lost. We lost Matt Garside the week before and uh, that's four or five core players out of your team you know, when things were going well and then to throw in some new players in the mix and, and that. But again, you still have an expectation that those players coming in will, will be able to step up and do the job and unfortunately uh, they haven't, hence why there was a, a couple of changes for today's game. Um, yeah, and like I said, the effort and the attitude and the application was great and I think it, we just ran out of juice. We just ran out of juice in the end and um, it was, you know, we lost Reese Lovegrove after 10 minutes with the with the concussion. That didn't help. So uh, we lost John Wallace through concussion, but fortunately we got him back. Um, Joe Keys went off with 15 minutes before half time. So, you know, the reality was, you know, we played, you know, I think pretty much 50 minutes there with one sub, um, and that was a reality. And I, you know, and I think in that last sort of eight minutes there where we were in front 14-12 and we were in the right end of the field, we give a penalty away on play two and just through laps of concentration and fatigue and, and like I said, we just ran out of juice in those last few minutes. So I'm not going to uh, chastise the players too much in terms of that because it was a big, it was a big, big effort, a big effort against a quality side, you know I didn't what I mean? I think they could have given any more. I thought no. the penalty against Oscar was really unfortunate because I wasn't sure the ball hadn't struck his foot as well. On the charge down. Yeah, it's one he of those ones. In front, though, when he, he was, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I can't, yeah. you can't argue. It's one of those yeah. things, mate. It's, it's, again, it's unfortunate, but uh, that's but the reality. You want him to pick the ball up there to stop them going forward and making a break because he got two men out of position yeah. on the kick. So. Yeah, it's, it's one of them ones, mate. It's, it's the way it is. I'm not. Yeah, like I said, I'm not going to no. you know, come down on that too hard, you know what I mean? So, like I said, yeah, there was one thing I asked of the players today was a was an attitude check, and I wanted to see improved attitude, um, you know, and like I said, if we got that today, hopefully the result would have taken care of itself. Unfortunately, it didn't, but it would give us um, some foundation or a platform to build off going into this Super 8s competition, mm -hmm. and now our challenge is to hold on to that attitude, uh, improve the little things we do with the ball, make sure we execute a little bit better and a little bit more clinical. Um, but again, there was so many positives out there today, I really thought uh, Matt Davis, the young kid, oh, mate, geez. just unreal. Like he last week against Workington, he made 63 tackles coming off uh, uh, on playing for 70 minutes. Made 63 tackles at Workington today. Absolutely worked his socks off. May even have to play front row there for a bit because we had no more front rowers. And he was taking kick off carries, finding his front. And he's what a gem he is. You know, we got him from uh, from the Midlands, and he's been in our academy, and he's been a real fine for his mate. And he deserves his first team opportunity next season in our full time squad. And uh, really proud of him. I thought young Toby Everett you know, did some, some great work out there today, coming off the bench for us. They really stepped up. Oscar Thomas, I thought, was, was great. I thought he really controlled the game for us today at halfback, especially when Keezy went off too, so there was a big responsibility on him. Um, you know, but he really, his kicking game, I thought, certainly at a yardage, was outstanding. Um, he put the ball at the right times in the right areas of the field, and I thought he did a great job in getting us around the field. And Elliot Michella, who had to then step into the half roles, I think yeah, he did a decent job too. So we were challenged a little bit there in terms of people having to play probably longer minutes than expected and in different positions and, and I really thought that the boys really stepped up and, and like you said gave it their all but 
it just wasn't quite good enough. And um, but we can't forget we're a very young side. You know, you look out there, you Toby Everett, 18, 19 years of age, John Wallace, 19, Matt Davis, 18, Elliot Mitchell is 19, Oscar Thomas, 21, Glenn Riley's 22, you know, Cunningham's 21. You know what I mean? Like you forget how young a team we. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> you know, so it's you know it's pretty obvious we're a young team. But like the the beautiful thing about it is we've got a lot of potential within this side. And um, they're going to be better for this year in the, in the championship, a lot of these younger guys. They'll be better next year. And, and my job is to recruit uh, a couple more older heads to get the balance of the squad a little bit better for next season, um, you know, so we can have a, a better shot at making that top four. But, you know, the focus now is obviously on the on the Super 8s campaign, which is coming up, which is still exciting. We've still got some silverware to play for. And hopefully, like I said, our performances will improve and we, we give ourselves a chance to finish on a high. Isn't the focus trying to keep 11 uh, uh, senior players on the field? Sorry? Isn't the focus really to keep all the senior players in the field? Yeah, you'd like to. You'd like to. Like I said, you know, you'd like to. Yeah. You had that series, that sort of series of quite nasty injuries. Is that just one of those things, or is, that, is there a reason in the conditions or anything that accounted for it? For today? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you see, every, every five minutes somebody was going down, the physio was on. Well, there was a lot of, um, for both teams as well, wasn't there? You know, even, I mean, fortunate probably for Sheffield is their players managed to stay on the field. Ours didn't, yeah. um, you know. Uh, but yeah, no, there seemed to be a lot of stoppages today, yeah. certainly with, uh, with head as well. Yeah, because there was nothing nasty about the game, was there? No, no, it was, it was just a civilised game. Yeah, it was just, um, no, it's just the way it went. Was illegal? I thought it was late. Uh, whether it was illegal, I don't know. So they've put it on oh, report. That's right. That's yeah, I thought he was. I thought it was a late challenge. From what I could remember, again, it's hard to comment till you see yeah, back on the sure. video. You know, but at, at that moment in time, my gut feeling was saying, yeah. "Oh, I think he's yeah. talking out late there." Whether it was any malice in there, I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, it's hard to see. Well, I, was like, I was on the bench at the time as well on the sideline, so it's hard to, to see what, yeah. what went on. Okay. Cle clearly, because I think one or two people have been looking at end of season and thinking well, it's obvious what's in it for Sheffield. We have a chance of going up. Yep. It's obvious what's in it for Workington. They're in danger of going down. Yes. You're. You, you, you can see you can do something in it for you know, for, for, for for London and absolutely Jewelry and Featherston the teams have just missed out yes you're not just sort of playing up three no no well the, the, I mean, look I said to you the, the thing for us is we've got to be honest as a group here you know it's been a very disruptive season yeah. for us you know in terms of if you look at uh, what started at the start of pre-season mm -hmm. basically by the end of round, by end of round two mm -hmm. we'd lost seven of uh, probably starting 17 players, in, whether that was long-term injury or had left the club for various reasons. Head coach left. Um, and then it was a case of, because obviously the pressure was always to finish top four, you know, I'm looking for the quick fix of bringing blokes in on dual reg. And that was purely because I was trying to protect my kids. We had a lot of, a lot of young London kids. I remember I was playing probably seven or eight London kids at the start of the year and, um, and we weren't getting results. And, and that was putting a lot of pressure on young shoulders and I was mindful of that. So I tried to get some established players from Super League clubs or, you know, to come in and try and do us a job to get us a couple of them wins till we came through that. Um, but again, for me, I've never been a fan of it, but it probably didn't ideally work. So I ended up turning my attention just to knock that on the head and I've, I've persevered with our kids and um, end up bringing, like I said, Matt Davis up from the academy and things like that. And, and like I said, when I put myself back into the team and um, that probably helped Tom Gilmore a little bit too in terms of where he was at. And, and, and we just started to get, build a bit of chemistry within the team and a little bit of direction, a bit of leadership. And um, like I said, we got a good run there uh, and we had a chance because like I said, we looked dead and buried, didn't we, before that Blackpool Bash game. And um, we really gave ourselves a chance, but unfortunately we just fell short in the big game against Halifax. And, it was always going to be a tough ask because I knew you'd have to win. Before going into that Sheffield game at Blackpool, I knew we'd have to win 10 out of our last 11. I didn't say that to the players, but you know what I mean? I knew that and it was always going to be a tough ask with such a small squad too because we had to almost do another Easter period where we played um, Lee... Uh, Batley, Doncaster, with the same sort of nine eight players, you know, and it probably just that probably took a lot out of us going into that Halifax game. Not excusing the level of performance that day, because but we had about seven eight players that were really off that day, and that was probably off the back of you know the mental and physical strain that's put on the squad because we haven't had a big squad all year, and the reality is now if we if Lovegrove and Joe Keys are out now, um, again it puts a lot of pressure on us in terms of what we've got left underneath. So you know, but. If I have to bring up some of the academy kids and give them an opportunity, then so be it. We have to do that, and uh, just got to do our best to finish the season on a positive note, and then we can build into into next season. How much was the off field, off -field disruption with uh, moving from Underhill to the new training ground? Another yeah. another thing to add on. Yeah. To yeah, that's probably another thing people forget about too. Yeah, we had to change training view venues after Christmas as well. So, yeah, again, like I said, it's been a, a lot of disruption this year. And um, but again, we're not 
the type of people, not so challenge the players. We can't be looking for excuses. At the end of the day, no matter where we're training, where we're playing, um, you know, we can control in terms of our level of performance and our attitude and what we deliver at training. You know, and some of our training sessions, I guess, probably haven't been good enough this year, and um, and that's probably reflected in some of our performances. And then there's been other weeks where we've been really, really good at training and reflected in some some great performances. So, you know, the challenges for the players. I think the biggest one for us is consistency in terms of what we're looking for. Um, we've got to keep driving the standards high, and that's the challenge I've laid down to the players coming into this, this final part of the campaign is we've got to raise our standards. Staff, players, everything, we're going to have to work harder together and we've got to get that consistency um, within what we're doing. And if we get that level of consistency, you create confidence and then off the back of that, you gain belief. Um, and like I said, once you get that belief factor coming in, you know, you're a tough animal to stop um, and we need to be clicking now at the right time of year coming into the, uh, the final series. Do you have injury updates on any of your guys? Uh, all I know is that um, obviously Joe Keyes, uh, there's a bit of a neck issue with him, so um, they're getting that checked out as we speak. Uh, Reece Lovegrave obviously was concussed, so uh, again, that's his second concussion probably in recent weeks, so I'm not sure how that, in terms of the protocol, where that leaves us with him. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the only update. There was nobody else that took any major knocks anyway, Ian.